I've been playing a lot of Pocket Bravery lately, and overall I'm having a lot of fun, and I'm really impressed with how much love was put into the game. You can tell from the characters, stages, and gameplay that this is a fighting game made by fighting game players. This is a love letter to SNK Pocket games like Neo Geo Pocket Color. If you play games like Pocket Rumble, this is up your alley. The art style is unique, the game has lots of depth, and this game will have two seasons worth of continuous support. This feels like a fully fledged out fighting game with all the bells and whistles, but to be blunt, it does have some faults which I'll go over as well. Before we begin, to maintain transparency, Satara so Studios did send me a code for Pocket Bravery, and don't plan on letting that influence my judgment. The story mode is a full on story, filled with cutscenes, character chapters, and interesting ways to intertwine the story and gameplay. The 2D animations look great and give a comic book style presentation. The gameplay portions are cut together to show off how to operate within a fighting game, here, it is teaching me how to anti-air these barrels. Oh shit! <laughs> the fights themselves have a lot of variety. Here, I have to fight a reverse dynamic battle rather than a traditional 1v1. Oh, I'm being wombo comboed. No! <laughs> what do I do? Help! <laughs> ah! Get away from me! Overall story modes aren't my cup of tea when it comes to fighting games, but I do appreciate when they can create these as an introduction point for newer players, and I can see myself coming back to understand the lore better. For other single player items, we have arcade mode, which works how you would expect it to, fight through a certain amount of characters, then take on the boss. The ending scenes are pretty solid, providing more lore for your characters. One thing I love too is that these intros to the stages are very reminiscent to Capcom vs SNK1. You have your survival and time attack modes. Combo trials are nice. I wouldn't recommend these to learn bread and butter combos, but they are a good way to learn combo routes. Combo Factory lets you input any sequence of moves and the computer will perform this sequence to see if this combos. This is to help new players discover combo routes. You can also slow down the combos so you can practice them at your own pace. I like this idea for newer players, but I don't have any issues finding optimal routes for, on my own, so this is not for me, but I recognize the innovation to help newer players. I would like to suggest that if they added in the motions to the descriptions, I call everything a fireball or a shuriken, so memorizing new move names is a slow process for me. So trying to navigate the menu while guessing what my moves were was a minor annoyance. There is a tutorial mode which teaches you the lingo and the mechanics of the game, a shop where you can purchase via in-game currency items such as characters, arts, and color palette. If you pay attention, you can see a lot of little nods at other fighting game characters. Now for the nerdy stuff. Training mode is top tier. You can queue up for matches, there's punishment training, so you can focus on punishing one special move or set the opponent to reversal on block or wake up. You can turn on hitboxes and hurtboxes so you can figure out why your opponent's move is constantly stuffing yours. You even get frame data in the game. All these options I feel are mandatory in current fighting games. Alright, so let's get into the gameplay. It is very reminiscent of the King of Fighters, especially KLF 98. You have light and heavy punch and kicks, along with command normals, special moves, EX moves, super moves, and ultimate attacks. The bread and butter combo structure seems to be you can rapid cancel light attacks into specials or doing heavy attacks into command normals and then cancel those into special moves, similar to most King of Fighters games. Each player gets a super special bar, which lets them perform super moves. The elemental gauge is what lets you do EX moves, which are souped up versions of your regular moves and often used to extend your combos via launcher or stun. Use a portion of both bars and cancel a special move into an EX special move, and that will be the majority of your more damaging bread and butter combos. Special moves can be super canceled into supers as well, as they are mainly used when you want to deal damage but don't have any elemental gauge left. When you have full elemental gauge and below 30% health, you can perform their ultimate attack, which does massive damage and does a sick startup animation. Neutral can come off as floaty since the jump marks are very high. No short hops to get in your opponent's face quickly, and crossups are kinda hard to land in general. And so this may seem like a more grounded fighting game, but that won't stop me from jumping. Throws are done by pressing light punch and light kick, similar to Capcom titles, along with throw whiff animations that leave you vulnerable, and critical hits are very similar to punish counters, which give you a ton of hits done. On defense, you'll need to be careful since you have a guard gauge that will build up when blocking, and if you block too much, your guard will be broken and free to an attack. 
If you take enough sequential damage, you'll get stunned. You can monitor that with the stun gauge, which causes me a lot of anxiety when I'm getting set play to death. Something a bit unique for this type of fighter is the breaker. By pressing heavy punch and heavy kick at the same time while blocking or getting hit, you can sacrifice elemental gauge to knock the opponent off of you. This is important to stop any potential guard crushes, or stop a combo that may win the match for the opponent. So let's get to the negative. The netcode and matchmaking still need a lot of work. At this time of this review, we are on version 1.08 and I'm still having trouble finding matches. When I do find a match, it's a crapshoot if the game will be good or not. This was made on GGPO rollback netcode, so the netcode should not be an issue unless it was not implemented properly. I've seen a lot of evidence that points in this direction, however. Oh my! He just rolled back into me! I'm on the East Coast with 300 upload speed on fiber wire, so when I play people on the East Coast or Midwest, the matches are fine, but as soon as I start playing people on the West Coast, it is unplayable. The frame delay and rollback counter are also bugged, so it's really hard to gauge what exactly is the issue. The rank mode is also currently bugged, so I can't climb the ranks. Whenever I try to create a new lobby, my game crashes. I can't even make the lobby, I think it froze. <laughs> King crashes are pretty common actually. We even had a bug where after a lobby match, we were both transported into the arcade mode. I don't know how to use my super bar at all yet. Continue. Continue, oh my gosh. What's all this shit? Why are they grading me, man? This is casuals. <laughs> what is going on? Oh, I'm on the roadmap. <laughs> Wait! <laughs> I'm mainly an online player, so I'm a bit SLL until they fix this, but they have talented people working on this game, who know a thing or two about GGPO, like the legendary high fight. So, I'm sure it's in good hands, and in a few more updates, it'll be functional. I hope. Editor lad here, I just got done with my video, and they released version 1.09, which, according to their changelog, addresses the netcode and matchmaking. I do not have time to verify this in-game, but I wanted to keep hope alive. It is unfortunate that we have an amazing indie fighter on our hands that is being stunted by less than functional netplay. I still had a lot of fun with this game and would recommend it once netcode and matchmaking has been addressed. Once that's taken care of, I do believe this could be a premier indie fighter in the FGC. I don't know what to tell you, but thanks for watching.